Alrighty, hello everyone, I'm Gaff from Masculine 740 today and welcome to a game that I have actually been looking forward to playing for a few days now. Uh, admittedly, this has fallen under my radar of games, but as soon as I saw it and looked into what it actually does, I thought, you know what, I'll have a bit of this. The game's called Space Engine and it's basically a planetarium as such. It's a game where you can look at objects in the universe which is actually pretty interesting and it uses procedural generation for locations that haven't been you know charted yet which is actually pretty interesting um, so if I click on continue here what will happen is it boots into the game and I think for this video what I'll do is actually look at the uh, the solar system now I did download a high definition pack so hopefully what we should be seeing is the solar system in high definition quality. Now it looks like I've got some screen tearing on my end. So I'll just very quickly, oh, it's actually backed out on me. That's not what's supposed to happen. That's what's supposed to happen, settings. Um, so yeah, these are the settings I am using. I guess I should turn vertical synchronization on because that's essentially V-Sync for those of you that don't know. And um, here we got multi-sample anti-aliasing, which I think is a graphics card thing. Um, but most of this other stuff is stuff that we can't really change. And you can actually like go right up very close to the sun. You know, they say never look into it and all that. But uh, if you do kind of look up close, then you'll see that it's um, cell shaded. And what you can actually do is like land. And um, right now I'm actually got like, kind of moving. But um, obviously we'll have to increase the speed a lot to like 10 kilometers per second. But um, obviously we want to explore the solar system so if we're going to leave the sun then we actually have to travel at a pretty hefty speed as you saw there was uh, some fraction of the speed of the light but you can actually see stuff like sunspots and all that on the surface of the sun and if we go over here to the left hand side there's nothing up in the top right corner that's where my webcam is and you're not seeing anything up there it's just like a loading symbol um, and using the scroll wheel here changes your speed so you'd think, oh, you want to scroll, you know, move backwards. So you press scroll back, it actually causes your speed to go down. But um, as you can see, we can actually change it to some, you know, hundreds of thousands of astronomical units a second, where one astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. So pretty hefty. You can see like this glare going on. It looks like a flare or something up here. Even though it's not really a flare, it's just the way the lighting is. But um. Yeah, it gives you information up in the top left as well, which my webcam would have been blocking. Um, it's an O2V spectrum that we're seeing right now. It's a, a yellow dwarf star. Um, you can actually look up all the properties here. That's, you know, one solar mass and a luminosity of one relative to the sun. Yeah, that's a solar luminosity. Um, got information. So this is talking about the sun, the history of it. Uh, it's a real object, obviously. The sun is a construct that doesn't actually exist it's a hologram as we all know uh, we can actually use the universe map and it gives us um, like a location of the sun so I'm guessing this is like our galaxy for instance um, and you can zoom all the way out and this is like oh right, this is like that's the galaxy look so you use the scroll wheel to zoom out this is like the galaxy in our local cluster of galaxies and then this is like the observable universe so out of the entire observable universe, we have to zoom all the way in this much just to be able to see the galaxy. Then we zoom into the galaxy and then we zoom all through these stars to see our local stellar cluster. And in all of this, we have our solar system and zoom right the way in and we see the sun in the very middle right here. So we can actually explore all the planets as well. I don't know if you can you know angle this at all oh you can right click and move around and you can change the uh, view some looks like that's supposed to be Jupiter or something with the uh, weird you know the squiggles around it might be all the moon orbits that's if you want to explore the universe so you can actually click this here and it gives us a list of all the planets in the solar system and if you hit click on this then it gives you uh, a list of all the moons as well. So we've got the Galilean moons of Jupiter, for instance. So we start at the sun, nice and easy. 
Now what we're going to do is I'm going to click on... Oh, and now it's not working properly. Okay. Actually, none of the buttons are working properly. What the hell? Don't say I have to do this the old-fashioned way and just have to go there manually. Uh, what, what's it clicking on right now? The sun, for instance. It's right here. You can actually click on all the other stars in the sky as well. And it'll tell you about them and tell you how far away they are. So you can click anywhere you want to and it tells you information about the star in question. So yeah, I want to click on this over here. There we go. Oh, what's this? Star browsers or something? Or oh, planets of some system at least. Oh, yeah, maybe it's planets of that system I just clicked on. So if you click on the sun, for instance, and do this. Don't worry, I'm a professional. I can get this to work. There we go. So now we've got Mercury. We can actually click on the top right and it gets those go to. And we can view Mercury. So Mercury is a pretty interesting planet. I think it's got the biggest, you know, core relative to its size. So it's quite weird how that's the case. There's actually a mission called Bepi Colombo that's actually heading to Mercury as we speak right now. Which is actually really interesting. So you can see stuff like this for instance. You see the sun in the sky and you can uh, you know, move on the surface. You can really go like at human speeds, like one meter per second and just this is what it would be like to move on the surface of Mercury. Just look how big it really is. You know, because I like this, I'm actually going to take a screenshot. How do I take a screenshot of this? Um, display. No, controls. I want to know the controls. Okay, screenshot without GUI is F11. So what I can do right now is if I get rid of this for a moment, let me just press F11. And I'll leave an F12 bit up as well. That's a Steam screenshot. It's actually saved in the bottom right look. So now we can increase our speeds and leave the surface of Mercury. Obviously it looks a bit low def there, but interesting to see the closest planet to the sun. Uh, quite a strange planet might I add as well. And it's on a elliptical orbit because it's so close to the sun. You know, general relativistic effects and all that might play a massive part. So that's Mercury for you ladies and gentlemen. So, hope you like seeing Mercury. Now we're going to move on to um, the hottest planet in the solar system, Venus. Sister planet Earth. Um, as you can see, it's actually just a very gaseous, gaseous planet. It's actually got a very thick carbon dioxide atmosphere. So, that's why very few missions have actually been to Venus. It's actually the Russians in the space race. They went to Venus while the Americans went to Mars. And every time they kind of got on the surface, they would get crushed and melted because of how, you know, hot it actually is. And the pressure as well is actually quite large. But, um, oh, what those are doing now? I pressed E and that caused you to you know rotate I think this is in like spacecraft mode or something so it says over here somewhere the one rotating Venus but um, this is quite you know not actually what it's like on the surface it's actually more like volcanic and all that a lot of lava so seeing all this dust on the floor is probably not accurate but you zoom out and you can zoom all the way through the clouds and then out you come I'm actually traveling at like 17% the speed of light, which is actually pretty fast. If only our spacecraft could travel at that kind of speed. But um, yeah, Venus is a pretty interesting planet. Um, though I don't think we'll ever get to explore it. Because it's way too hot. But ladies and gentlemen, now we've got our lovely blue planet. Looking right over Indonesia, I guess, and Australia. Um, can I rotate? Yeah, you can actually rotate it around to make it look a lot nicer. And if we head over to the dark side, then you can actually see all the uh, street lights. And you've got Aurora as well. Let's see Aurora Borealis and Northern Lights. Uh, this is uh, over Europe right now where it's night time. And you've got all the city lights and all that. That's another beautiful image actually. You know what? I'll F11 and F12 this as well. There you go. So, save that up. Looks pretty cool. 
Now, I don't know if you can actually, like, go into the oceans and all that. But, um, you can, like, crash land. And then it will show us the surface. Now, it's going to be, like, black. Because it's night. So, uh, let's actually go on to the day daylight surface somewhere. Um, that's, to ex that's something you have to expect as well. Because there's no light uh, on the dark side of the planet there. It's going to look up. You know, it's going to look like pitch black. But we can crash land pretty much anywhere. And it's like... Where if I just landed, guess what, there's no buildings, it's just a grassy field as far as the eye can see. And I think it's like this wherever you go, it's just green everywhere. So, you can actually probably get like some airplane simulation stuff going on as well. You can rise up in the clouds of the planet, and then zoom out, and then go into the ocean, because fuck it, why not? Yeah, you can actually kind of go like under the sea. Pretty interesting. It looks like a little bug. You see that light blue there? That's probably where it curves downwards. But then, oh, look at that water. Look how great that looks. It's a, just, the water's static, as we all know. It doesn't actually move. There's no ripples whatsoever. But you can zoom all the way out of this. And there we go. So that's our planet and then what we can do now as I say is we can actually click down here and we can actually go to um, the moon admittedly now it's the dark side of the moon that's looking at us but um, you can just go on the moon anywhere you want to preferably where it's light and where you can kind of see the earth as well I think that would look pretty cool but uh, you probably won't be able to so just zoom up and out you can kind of like fly around as well, so just you can zoom around until we find the white right spot. So we can actually like camp down around here somewhere, and then we can see like the Earth just in the distance. It's all the way over there. That's how you, that's what it would look like from this angle. So again, that's pretty uh, interesting to say the least. So we just want to zoom on out like so. And you can kind of just like fly around and do all sorts of stuff in this. So this is actually really interesting. You can see stuff in the background as well. So this is the large Magellanic cloud. We've got the star over here. Um, this over here is blue stars or blue white stars. Um, so you can actually like look and you can actually go to them as well. That's the thing. You can actually go to these uh, star systems and they might even have you know planets around them that you can explore you can go to all the way over there if you want to you can probably explore different galaxies if you really wanted to I don't know what this game offers but uh it looks like it'll be pretty interesting so no I don't want to get out of this menu because that's like a bunch of stars and now I want the solar system Oh god, what am I doing now? Hold on. Wait, wait, let's select the body we're at, the moon. Then if we do this, there we go. So now we can go to Mars. So we zoom all the way over to where Mars is. The red planet, even though it looks kind of brown. That's due to, uh, you know, rust, basically. Iron oxide on the surface, that's why it's red. Or brown, rather. It'd be interesting if you could see like the rovers on the surface. You know, just see like opportunity or something around here somewhere. But you can see up in the sky, there's actually something over there, look. Which is actually the sun itself. That's what the sun would look like apparently on the surface of Mars. Uh, from this position that we're at. And the sky. Oh, there's there's the sun actually. That's what it would apparently look like. You've got lens flares going on. You can see some stars through it. Um, so, or even planets, maybe, through the Martian uh, atmosphere. Though that's probably just this game, you probably won't be able to see it in reality. Though you might, who knows. Uh, and of course, Mars has its moons as well. We've got uh, Phobos and Deimos, so you can actually go to these. Whoa, went right for the planet. But here we go. So, obviously, these are just like asteroids. Oh, I kind of went through it, you saw that? For a moment. But that's uh, Mars up close. 
Um, and I would say there's really not much to say. Um, I do want to kind of get through this because I know I'm kind of under time constraints right now. But I'm just showing this to you that to demonstrate the fact that this is what you can actually do in this uh, in this game. If you can call it a game or an application or something, you just like crash onto planets and you do head spins and all that. I actually want to see if you can see Mars properly. Actually, sure the surface might be you know black when you land on it, but uh. Okay, where the hell's Mars gone? Did I lose? There it is. Okay, so it's right over here. Looks more like a wireframe, doesn't it? Uh, and because, um. You know, it's just a small, like, meteor. Or, no, not meteor. A small, a small asteroid, basically, this. Oh, God, you can. Yeah, you definitely go through it. Um, you can actually, like, look. That's Olympus Mons over there, and you have three volcanoes, I guess, that are dormant on Mars. Um, of course, there's a place called Cydonia on Mars, the Muse song for people that know that. Uh, the Knights of Cydonia, Cydonia is actually on Mars. But um, yeah, that's another beautiful image. I'll tell you what, let's uh, F11 and F12 this one up as well. One of these I'll be using as a thumbnail, so you never know which one I actually decide to use. At the end of the day, I just clicked out of that. Uh, we've got Ceres now. Ceres is in the asteroid belt, so let's head on over. It's actually kind of spherical. And it actually has like white, these like light pockets on its surface as well. Which is pretty interesting to say the least. Um, good old scientists don't know what the actual cause might actually be. So it's... Uh, Fairly interesting, a nice little oddball planet, or not, a dwarf planet I should say. That's what they would uh, classify this as. Uh, in the asteroid belt, and what don't you see in the asteroid belt right now? Asteroids. Because in reality, the asteroid belt is humongous. So while, you know, you might hear people say there's actually a large, large amount of asteroids in the asteroid belt, they're so spread thin that this is probably what it would be like, it's just you don't see any asteroids anywhere for miles around you. Hundreds of miles, thousands of miles around you. So, nice little uh, intermission going into the uh, outer solar system now with our gas giant planets. I think there's something interesting that happens here if you try to go into a gas giant planet. It's like, there's no solid surface it's just a big ball of gas so you just fall through for instance and then it's like oh do you hit the surface or don't you I don't know where am I going I don't know. let's increase the speed massively and I'm heading backwards by the way as well and you might need to travel at really high speeds just to escape as well because uh, that's probably what needs to happen because you know Jupiter's the biggest planet it has a strong amount of gravity so if you're going right into the center like I am and this is like the surface for instance, even though it really doesn't have a surface then you're going to have to travel really fast to escape it. So as you see, you know, thousand kilometers per second for instance just to try and get out of here. So it doesn't really have a solid surface so can't really repeat what uh, Galileo or Juno for instance would have done. But um, you can see there's actually a different colour of aurora up here, uh, mostly because of the gas composition. So the, the auroras are formed by um, the solar winds, charged particles from the sun over there, and they get caught in the magnetic field of a planet and pretty much caught up in the poles, and these charged particles interact with the gas that's there and creates these light shows. So because Jupiter's like hydrogen and helium, so that would be the interaction due to stuff like hydrogen, that colour is what you get. And green is like nitrogen or oxygen or something on Earth, so that's why they appear that way. But we can actually explore the other planets. We've got Io, which is the it's not the closest moon to Jupiter, but it's actually the closest Galilean moon. Heavily volcanic as you can kind of tell. Uh, a lot of sulfur on its surface. And you can actually like look up and see Jupiter in the sky, majestic. And uh, you could probably go over like volcanic, volcanic hotspots as well if you really wanted to. 
but uh, I can just look around and see what Io has to offer. You go to a pretty fascinating moon, Europa, which is an icy body actually. So it's actually like got solid ice on its surface. So it might be, you know, like an ocean underneath the surface. You never know. Um, so there could be life on Europa. You never know. So not on its surface because it's ice cold beyond ice cold might I add um, but you never know it might it's an interesting proposition shall we say you can look at something like Jupiter and see a mini solar system perhaps you can go to Ganymede which is another big moon of the solar system might be actually the biggest moon of the solar system and uh, trying to find Jupiter again in the sky to see what it would look like so you can kind of just look up and wonder and in fascination as to what you're comprehending right now. So you could zoom out in our awesome spaceship and go to a place like Callisto, which is, uh, I think this is another interesting moon to be honest. So from what I've uh, been here, from what I've been hearing people say and all that, it's a uh, one of these moons where it's got some bizarre stuff going on and it's uh it's causing people to think really about what the hell might be going on there. I think this is a nice image as well, you can kind of see a moon. You can see a... Uh, I can't even click on it because Jupiter's in the way. But uh, that's F11 and F12 this one up as well. So that's the Jupiter system, there's many more moons to Jupiter but most of them are just like asteroids essentially so it's not really worth looking at so if I'm off camera as well I just need to go like this to uh, see what I'm doing because I've got a lot of stuff in my way for this setup that I have right now ah oh, damn it I've just gone off it again um, I'm trying to round this off very quickly not that I need to go or anything I just want to uh, see what's going on and it's not doing it now are you for real what the hell's going on sometimes this left menu doesn't work properly now I've backed out of it are you for real there we go, okay, now we want to go to Saturn. Saturn is a gorgeous, gorgeous planet. Beautiful ring system. You can actually go to more moons on Saturn than you can on Jupiter. This is Mimas, the Death Star, if you will, because of the crater that you see right around here, which is which makes it look like the Death Star, which is why it's referred to as that. You can kind of land on the crater if you really want to. Just look around majestically. Just zoom across its surface. That's hundreds or even kilometers a second. Really fast. That's a nice little view right there. We got Enceladus, another interesting planet that people weren't really expecting much from. But it ended up being a pretty interesting planet. It actually um, creates one of the rings, the outermost rings of Saturn, gas streams and all that. So pretty interesting, these like scars on the southern hemisphere, I think. Interesting. We got Tethys, which is out on the other side right now. So just most of this is just the same sort of stuff. You just go on the surface, you see it's rocky, you can look up and Hopefully, see Saturn with its uh, overall ray as well going on. And from the surface, you can actually just go straight to the other planets, Dione, for instance, and just crash on the surface at thousands of kilometers a second and survive somehow. And look up and wonder. And you can see that like, you know the other moons in that there as well. Uh, Rhea, for instance, as well. And you just crash on this surface wherever and look up and there you go We've got a nice little uh, system right here and it actually says it's rotating as well so that's uh, something that's fairly interesting uh, probably the most mysterious moon of the solar system Titan it actually has an atmosphere so a bit weird that a moon has a solar system right but you can actually go on the surface and see this haze 
and needs a thick atmosphere as well. I don't know if they'll be detailed enough to actually include like oceans and that of like liquid methane or whatever, which is the way liquid actually exists on the surface of Titan. But um, it's a pretty interesting place to be honest. So definitely a place that deserves some exploration in the future I would say. But it takes so long to get there, that's the fact of the matter, you have to keep that into consideration. You know, space exploration is not like this where you can travel at thousands of kilometers a second at will. It's not that easy. Um, so, yeah, we're at a moon that's quite far away now. And you can see the, uh, the Saturn system in the distance. So, oh, come on, I clicked out of it again, if you will. We can go to a, a planet I've actually done a piece of coursework on for University Uranus. It's actually a pretty odd planet. It's actually like rolling um, uh, along its orbit. So its northern North Pole, for instance, is like here instead of being up here. So it's actually a quite strange planet. Like it's, as I said, rolling. So something must have happened for that to happen basically something had to happen to you in its past for that to happen now for you know this planet to be rolling essentially but uh you can get a nice image that would definitely be worth a, a screenshot and it has a very faint ring system as well going along essentially where the north pole and south pole should be uh, we can actually go to uh, you know all the other moons of the system i believe they're actually named after people in Shakespeare's plays uh, you know the moons of Uranus so that's uh, uninteresting fact uh, they could go to Umbriel for instance and Titania and Oberon and I'm pretty sure there's a moon named Hyperion as well and I'd only call that out because I'm actually playing Borderlands recently uh, I might play the newly launched Borderlands 2 DLC on a video but uh yeah, that's just, just something on my mind right now, just so you know. But just, you know, showing you the moons briefly, going onto the surface, crashing into them, looking up and wondering, as you do. And you have, a, you have an idea of the temperature as well, like minus 213 degrees Celsius, that is well cold, that is. But, um... That is no laughing matter, ladies and gentlemen. That is actually really, really cold. So you can actually click this to go back, which is not what I've been doing. And you can go to Neptune now. Going even further out. And again, another very, very faint black ring system, as you can see. Um, and one thing to note as well, the further out from the sun we go in, not only the fainter does it look, but actually the wind speeds in the atmosphere actually begin to increase quite drastically so that's why on the surface of Neptune you actually get the strongest winds you'll ever experience in the solar system so you can actually crash land on the surface of I can't even read what that says from this position one of the moons of Neptune and that's not a very nice view to be honest oh what the hell I'm going through it oh that's what you can do you can actually kind of go through the moon and see like the wireframe not of its physics um, model that's not very nice Let's go over here, Triton. So this is a very interesting moon, to be honest. What the hell is going on there? It's like a lens flare or something. It's like interacting with a very faint atmosphere as such. Very interesting. And of course that's more probably because the surface of Triton is very icy as well. But it's ice to the point where it's you know creating this smooth surface and it's not very cratered which is something that you would expect on a moon like this so you know I think this is another nice image let's F11 and F12 this there we go it takes that long just to uh, save a screenshot apparently but yeah Triton is actually a moon that's going along a retrograde orbit which means it's orbiting in the opposite direction to Neptune's spin 
So it must have been an object that was caught by Neptune and you know it's a big mystery to be honest. I wouldn't know what caused it. Uh, we can actually have further explosion into the outer solar system. We got Pluto which uh, that does not look very nice does it? That's that solid texture on its surface in this uh this very low res looking um texture here. I did download a HD pack, let me tell you. Um so it was not it's not supposed to look this uh this nasty to be honest from this uh this angle. Yeah it definitely looks really low res especially this face it just looks like it's just a solid colour. But Pluto has a moon system it actually has more moons than I ever would have imagined it actually has Sharon which is one I knew of apparently there's another four objects here that we can look at we can look up and see the low res Pluto in the sky this looks actually more high res than Pluto does so uh, there's that uh, you can go to all the other moons as well and there's other um, Probably they're defined as trans-Neptunian objects, which means they're just beyond the orbit of Neptune um, and in the Kuiper Belt, which is an object of asteroids. Just a large, 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 large collection of asteroids over a even larger amount of space. We can go along this uh, asteroids surface. I think that says Nyx, doesn't it? Let me just go over here. You can probably see the asteroid it just came from as like a point source. Um, so again, looks like a tri. There's like a three spheres merged together somehow, really badly. Make sure you go all the way around here to Kerberos, I think. Yeah, another asteroid. I think what these actually tells you is the size of the asteroids or the size of the planet. So this is like 38 kilometers in size, which is actually large by human standards, but in universal standards, it's actually really small. But that's um, supposedly the Pluto system, and I've just closed out of this event again. God damn it, Humea, all right the way out. Minus 230 degrees. Oh my days! Look at this. It's like an oval. Look how elongated it is. And apparently this has moons as well, or at least other objects you can actually go to. You know, these weird rounded objects. So, you just like go to them and explore them. And of course there's all craters on the surface here as well. So you can just look around and look up and see the... <laughs> it looks like something you'd, you know, create custom, like a custom planet to go to, not an actual object that exists in our solar system. You know, it's this weird, you just look up in the sky and you see this oval. Really bizarre in my opinion. Never seen that before. Uh, is that Make Make or Marke Marke, whatever they're going to say it? Another object in the outer solar system. We're reaching two, minus 238 degrees Celsius. That's actually bloody cold let me tell you I mean this is the kind of temperature where you get stuff like nitrogen forming ice you know like nitrogen and like hydrogen maybe not hydrogen ice that's probably like really really cold close to absolute zero temperatures I don't think this is near absolute zero but it's bloody cold so you get these ices not like water you do get water ice but not like you know your typical ice you get as I said like nitrogen ice and methane ice or something way out here in the outer skirts of the solar system and now we get Aries actually the furthest object in the solar system that space engine actually considers taking you to of course it's not the most distant object from the Sun in the solar system it's just the furthest one that you can go to in space engine right now. The sun's all the way over there, a mere star amongst all the other stars in the solar system. A whopping minus 240 degrees below zero, that's bloody 
bridges, let me tell you. You can like crash land into this. So it makes you wonder what kind of missions would actually get out and see this sort of stuff, you know. I mean, you had the Voyager missions and uh, New Horizons, I think it was, for going to Pluto. But how do you see stuff like this? Like all these other outer trans-Neptunian objects, for instance. So I think this is really interesting. It's a beautiful experience to be able to go to places in the universe and explore them and I can actually go right the way back here by traveling at 10% the speed of light you can just zoom right past and zoom off like Voyager would into the black gulfs of space never to be seen again and you can just zip away and everything just becomes a mere speck and you just fly away into nothingness sad really but that's the way it is you hurtle through space and there's a lot of nothingness but ladies and gentlemen this has been me covering the solar system in space engine i have no idea how i'm going to work this if i'm going to include the full thing or just include bits and pieces but um there's definitely a lot you can do in this for instance i can actually click this search right now and i can actually go to a place that i studied for a research project called Sagittarius A star which is actually a supermassive black hole in the center of our Milky Way galaxy and you can see it's a massive star cluster and if you actually click into this menu this sort of planet viewer you can actually see all the uh, stuff that's actually you know appropriate to this location hopefully um, it's not looking like you can really go there right now but um, we've got all these stellar clusters um, S2 for instance is going to be around here somewhere which is a star that's actually very well known around um, the centre of the Milky Way galaxy. If only it would actually allow me to see it properly. Yeah here we go. So we've got Sagittarius A star itself which we can go to right in the centre here which looks a little like this. That's actually like a gamma uh, just emission of energy. And you don't want to venture too close because, you know, black holes and all that are no laughing matter. But that's what it would actually supposedly look like according to this. But as I said, you can go to like S2, which is a star that's orbiting around. And go here, it's a blue star. So the sort of stars you would see are actually the very bright stars. There actually may be many, many more stars that you won't know of. But actually fairly, you know, dim they're way less intense than any of these bright stars that you'll be seeing in this region of the galaxy so pretty interesting if you ask me so I will leave you with um, good old Sagittarius A star here uh, maybe next time I'll look into black holes and actually go to other galaxies maybe or maybe go to other places in the solar system you can go to well, not solar system our galaxy my, excuse me you can go to other planets and star systems and even go to like nebulae and stuff so it's a very comprehensive complex and beautiful beautiful experience i would definitely recommend it to you guys this is not a paid promotion or anything like that i'm not kissing this game's ass because i'm being paid to seriously i'm not um this is actually a really really nice game and if you like space then you, if, there's every possibility that you'll like this too so I would definitely say check it out if you really want to. I will have to basically at this point say thank you very much for watching me play Space Engine. This has actually been a very pleasant experience today and obviously I'm in my NASA t-shirt. I don't know if you can see it but NASA. So I wore this especially for today to play this game. So hope you enjoyed it. I will be playing this again hopefully. I have to check if the videos come out okay. It probably looks like ass but hopefully it doesn't. With all this being said and done, hope you enjoyed and see you for the next video whatever it is I decide to do. Have a great day and see you later.